In this Unreal Engine 5 animation tutorial, I will show you how to make an animation blueprint and animate our character with an 8-way movement. You can follow along with your own project or if you want to use mine, I've included it in the description below. I'm inside of a new project and the only thing inside of this project is this simple level and we have our character mesh and then we have an 8-direction movement. So we have the idle, walking, running back, running back left, back right, running front, front left, front right, and also running left and right. So if you want to apply this to your own character, you need these movements as well. If you're interested in in-depth game development courses, please visit my website pixelhelmet.com, which you can also find in the description below. All right, I'm going back to the content folder and I'm going to right click, make a new blueprint class, and I'm just going to create a new game mode. So this one is called BP Game Mode. Then I'm going to right click again and make a blueprint class. And this time I'm going to create a player controller. This one called BP Player Controller. And as the last thing, again, right click, create a blueprint class and then select character. So this is the player and call it BP Player. Now let's go inside of the game mode. And simply inside of here, the only thing you want to is here to the right. For the player controller, select your own BP player controller we just made. And for the default pawn class, select the BP player. Now let's close it down and let's go to edit, project settings. And then let's go to maps and modes. And here we need to switch out the default uh, game mode base. You just make sure you have switched it to BP game mode. And also make sure that you can click on this small arrow make sure that the default pawn class is bp player and the player controller is bp player controller close it down and here in the world settings now if you don't have the world settings you can click on window and then click on world settings so here also for the game mode override we need to click on this and select our game mode let's open the bp player and inside of here i'm going to click on open full blueprint editor going to the viewport here i'm going to click on the mesh and then down here, select the mesh. So I'm going to select my escape pirate. Now I need to orient him correctly. So I'm going to click on E to take the rotate tool or you can use the tools up here. So let's rotate him 90 degrees like this. Just make sure he's pointing forward regarding to this arrow here. This is the forward direction. And then I'm going to go to the right view and I'm going to zoom in here and then dragging him down and I'm going to reduce my snapping here so it's actually working. The thing I'm doing is I'm trying to fit him with this uh, capsule. So trying to resize this capsule a little bit so it fits the character. Click on the character, I'm going to remove this snapping and then I'm going to just uh, take it down here where he stands on the ground, just like that, perfect. And then I'm going to reduce the Oops, not this one, the width of this one, so it fits better. And everything's looking correct. So now let's compile and go back to the perspective mode. And now we are ready to do the animation because here we need the animation blueprint. So let's close it down, right click here, go to animation, and let's select a animation blend space first before we make the animation blueprint. So select the blend space, select the skeleton for your character, and call this blend space pirate run and now let's double click and open this blend space so inside of this blend space you have this details panel in the details panel what's important is the horizontal axis and the vertical axis so let's click on the small arrows for those and open it up inside of here for the horizontal axis this is the movement direction so you need to change the name here to movement direction and down here for the vertical axis you need to change the name to movement speed and you can see the name also changes down here. So we have the movement speed on this axis. And then we have the movement direction on this axis. We need to correct the values up here. The movement direction goes from the minimum value, which is minus 180, and the maximum value, which is 180. So we have a 360 degrees uh, movement turning. And down here for the movement speed, the maximum value, it depends on what the speed of your character is. So if you click on the BP player, and here in the character movement component, you can see the max walk speed is 600 for this player. Usually here in the blend space, I usually put half of the 
the speed of the player because I wanted to transition faster to the full animation. Then here in the grid division, I'm going to write eight because we are going to create an eight way movement. And now we are ready to do the movement. So if you want to change the mesh over here, you can click on the preview mesh up here, select your pirate so you can see the pirate instead. So down here, we have the movement speed of zero. So all the way here, we just need to plug in the idle. So what you can do is just click and drag this idle and holding shift, when holding shift, you can see it's actually snapping to these corners. So I'm going to drop the idle down here, down here, down here, and just do it all the way down here because the speed is zero and we are not moving at all. Okay, so now up here, the movement speed is 300. So we're at full movement speed. And over here, the direction is zero. So we're not moving from side to side. So here, we're actually just running forward. So I'm going to drag the run forward and hold shift again to snap it and snap it up here. So now if you hold control on the keyboard and just move your mouse, you can actually see the animation and it's working perfectly. Okay, so let's continue. Here on the right side, we need the right animations. On the left side, we need the left animations. So here we need the front right. This is this one, front right. Again, snap it up here. Front left is this way here because it's on the left side. And the left over here, the right, if I can find it here, is here. And the back left is over there. The back right. And then we have the back, which is on the corner. And also the back is over here as well. So I can click this label for you and you can actually see how we plugged it in. So we have the front, front right, right, back right and back. And the same thing here for the other side, we have the front left, left, back left, and back. So now you, have, you can hold control and you can actually see the animation and it's working perfectly. Let's now close it down and let's just save everything. Now right click down here, go to animation and let's create an animation blueprint. So again, select the skeleton for your character and I'm going to call it an MVP player. Now let's go inside of the animation blueprint and here in the animation graph, let's right click and write state machine. So you have to create this before you can do anything. So creating a state machine, I'm going to call it locomotion or movement, that's up to you. And you can just connect it to this output pose. Now let's go into the locomotion or state machine here. Let's drag and then create a new state. And this state I'm going to call idle move or, or idle run. That's up to you. Now let's go inside of here. And what we need to plug in here is this blend space we just created. So let's drag it here and let's connect it and let's compile and save everything. And you can see the player here is animating now. However, we need a movement direction and a movement speed. So we need to calculate this. So what you need to do is you need to go to the event graph instead. So let's go inside of here. In the event graph, let's right click and write initialize animation. So here, blueprint initialize animation. This is the same as saying begin play in an ordinary blueprint. So initialize animation is just a begin play. So what we need to do here is we need to take this, try get pawn owner. And let's drag from here and say is valid. Let us connect this now. And if this is valid, so if the player has, what we're trying to do here is just saying it has this player spawned into the world. So let's say you are in Counter-Strike and you are selecting your character in the character selection screen. This means this is not valid yet. You are not spawned into the world. However, when the player is spawned into the world, then this will be valid. So we don't need to run this animation code if your player has not spawned yet. It would not make any sense. And it will also not be optimized because why would you run code that you don't need yet? So this is just for optimization. Now, if it is valid, if the player has spawned into the world, let's right click here and promote this to a variable. And let's call it player pawn. So let's connect it here to the is valid. And now we have a variable for the player. Now, if it is not valid yet, let's delay the code. So writing delay with something like 0 0.5. So we don't want to do it all the time because again, if you delay by a very small amount, it keeps running the code really fast and it's not really optimizing anything. So let's say 
a delay of 0.5. So it's going to wait half a second again before it checks. And then you can connect the complete back to this execution pin. So we keep checking if the player has spawned or not. And when the player spawns, we're going to set it into a variable. Now let's take this variable. You can hold control and drag it out. Let's right click and say convert to validated get. So again, we're just making sure the this variable is valid before we do anything. Let's drag from this pin and say get velocity because now we're wanting to get the movement speed. Remember in the animation graph here in the idle move state, we need the movement speed and we need the movement direction. So in the event graph, now we're trying to get the movement speed. So getting the velocity, and this is a vector variable. It's yellow here. It's a vector. You can see here we need a float. We don't need a vector. So what we need to do to convert a vector to a float is drag from here and say vector length. This is simply just to convert it into a float. And now we can right click promote to variable and call it movement speed. Let's connect it here to the is valid. And now we need to calculate the direction. So let's drag from this one, the velocity, and say calculate direction. And now we need a base rotation. So we can drag from this player and say get actor rotation. And that is simply it. This is very, very easy stuff. So now we can right click this float, promote it to a variable, and call it movement direction. So this is actually all that we needed. So we have the movement speed now by getting the velocity and converting it to the length. And then we have the direction. We calculate the direction from the actor's rotation as well. So now we have those. Let's go back to the animation graph here, clicking on the state machine, going to the idle move state. And now here we can drag the movement speed, plug it into here and drag the movement direction, plug it into here. Let's compile and save everything and let's close it down for now. Now for the player, you can open up the player, go to the mesh. You can also go to the viewport so you can see the player. And then up here in the animation mode, use animation blueprint is correct. And then we have to select our animation blueprint and you can see it is animating correctly. So now we have to do the movement for the player. Let's right click here, go to input. And here let's select input mapping context. And let's call this one default. Now let's right click again go to input and create an input action. And this one, I'm just going to call movement. Now for this, imp uh, this input action movement, I'm going to change the value type to axis 2D because we want to move to two axes. So the, the left and right and the up and down. So two different axes. Let's select axis 2D, let's close it down and let's open the mapping context. Here we want to click on the plus for the mappings. And then let's select the IA movement we just made. And then now we have to select the button. So clicking on this keyboard icon, I'm going to click on W on my keyboard to assign it. Clicking on the plus here. And I'm going to assign my IS button. Clicking on the plus, my D button. Whoops, not the F, the D. And clicking on the plus and the A button. So moving forward, backwards, moving to the right, and moving to the left. So here for moving back, so forward is working correctly, but here for moving back here in the modifier, we have to select negate because this is just reversing the movement. So moving back is just the opposite of moving forward. So the same here, moving right is correct. However, for moving left, we need to add the modifier negate because we're moving the opposite way. Also here for the left and right, we actually need another modifier and we need to select to world space because it will run forward and backward if we don't add this. So let's add to world space as well and save everything. Let's now close it down. Let's go back to the player and let's add this mapping context. So here in the event graph for the player, I'm going to delete those. And here in the begin play, I'm going to right click and say get controller. And from this controller, let's drag and say Pass to BP controller. Now, as this player controller, we can now drag and say enhanced and select this enhanced input local player subsystem. Now, drag from here and say add mapping context. Now, we are adding this mapping context here that we just made to this player so we can actually move the player. 
Okay, so this is ready now. And the last thing we need to do is right click and say IA movements. This is the input action we created down here. So we created the IA movement. When we press on W, we want to move forward. So let's right click and say get actor forward vector and drag from here and say add movement input. So it should be connected like this here in the triggered. And for the scale value, let's actually right click the action value, split the struct pin. Remember in the input action, we selected axis 2D. So here we could right click and split this struct pin because we have two axes. This is an axis 2D. So for the X uh, axis, we want to connect it to the scale value here. And then for the right and left movement, let's right click and say get actor right vector. And let's say add movement input, just like before, connected. And for the scale value here, let's connect the Y. So the last thing we need to do now is add a camera for the player so we can see what we are doing in the level. So clicking on the mesh here, and you can go in the viewport as well. Clicking on the mesh, let's click on add. Add a spring arm, which is simply a holder for the camera. And then click on the spring arm, add a camera component. And now we have the camera. So clicking on the spring arm, let's take the rotation tool, or you can click up here or click E on the keyboard, and let's rotate it behind the player. And I'm also going to rotate it something like this here, and also moving it upwards so you can move it in the Z location here, something like this. It's up to you what you want to do here. And if you want this further away from the player, you can increase the target arm length for this spring arm. So sending it to something like 600 maybe, let's compile and let's see what happens if we have any bugs, if we have something to correct. So clicking on the play, you can move forward, backward, you can move to the left, you can move to the right, and also move in the other directions. So everything is working correctly as it should. And this is how you do an eight-way directional movement.